Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Marsupial by Satonic Synth. So the Marsupial is a dual VCF, a voltage controlled filter. And this is of course not the first dual VCF that I'm featuring on my uh, channel, but it is an extremely special one. And well, just to get into a couple of the features, I just love the way how you can indeed manipulate the cutoff frequencies for both of them. They've got an offset approach instead of just using two independent knobs. And that's very interesting, especially because you can then play with both of them at the same time while making sure that they do have an offset, that they're not tuned the exact same way. Um, the other thing I truly like is that it is self oscillating. So you can indeed use this dual VCF as a dual VCO as well. Of course, only with a sine wave output, of course. Um, but let me just stop right there and don't spoil any of the other surprises. Um, I do have to thank Satonic Synth again for sponsoring this episode, but for now we'll just say uh, hope you guys are sitting down because uh, here we go. Here we've got Masupil, the second Satonic Synth module I'm featuring on my channel. The first one was of course the Boeing, and one of the reasons why I love Marsupial is on the one hand, it's the name. As I mentioned during my first video on the Boeing, is that Satonix is of course the, well, the scientific name for the most ferocious um, land animal in Australia, and that is the quokka. So the quokka is indeed um, part of the Marsupial family. So that's why I love that they use that name, that ferocious name for this quite ferocious filter as well. So um, what I want to do is quickly run through the actual interface, um, show you how it works, make sure that you understand how it sounds, what you can do, how you can sh shape your sound with this, and then of course make a nice patch with it. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. So we've got a global cutoff um, set in here, and that's going to be for both filters. So as I said, this is a dual filter. So this cutoff frequency will influence both filters. And then you can do an offset between filter A and filter B with this secondary knob there. So if you put this in the middle, they'll have the same cutoff frequency. Now you've got resonance. And if you turn it all the way up, you'll start to see these lights light up which of course does indicate that this is a self oscillating or uh, self resonating filter. So you can do a lot of great things with this. Um, then you've got your CV inputs for the cutoff frequencies. And this has an attenuverter for each one of these inputs. So if you turn this all the way clockwise, this does well uh, cor correlate to one volt per octave. So that's always nice to uh, to keep in mind. Uh, they are again, they are normal, and you do have a dedicated one volt per octave in there as well. And right here in the middle, you've got your uh, selector if you want to use these two filters in series or in parallel. It's got a nice clunk to it, so uh, very satisfying to use that. Um, you've got your um, your audio in for A and B, and again just like the CV and the volt per octave in, this is again normal from A to B. And then you've got your outputs um, uh, for bandpass filter for uh, A and B, and you've got your uh, output for the low pass filter as well. And again, you can use them just like you want. So that being said, let's have a quick listen to it. So I'm just gonna be using the triangle wave from the Orna and let's have a quick look at that. So this is a very tight triangle wave. Uh, you can actually get a ruler and get it next to it and it's gonna be almost entirely um, straight if you go from, the, from one peak to the other peak. So that's good to keep in mind. And if you then grab the outputs from the low pass filter for A and patch that in, Oh, and open it up all the way. Then you do see that the wave shape is already a bit distorted. And don't get me wrong, that is not a bad thing because this is of course the thing that we're looking for. We're using a filter to shape our sound. So if you then just uh, lower the frequency, you're gonna eat away at the higher frequencies of course. 
and if you add some resonance to it you do see that resonance traversing the higher frequencies there as well so that's really nice and if you turn it all the way open always good and if we do the same thing for the band pass turn the resonance down maybe use a bit of a higher frequency there add a bit of resonance to it resonance all the way open always nice right so then let's have a look at how these work together so I'm just gonna I'm, I've just got it in series so if I then I've now connected to the B output so it will be connected in series so if you go to your well to your main frequency there now you can use the B output but as this is in series there's nothing really happening as until you get to that 12 o'clock position and then you can start eating away at the rest of the frequencies. There you go. Let me just make this a bit higher. And if you then put it in parallel, you can indeed see that we do a lot more to it. We actually see both filters opening up a bit. And this is really visible if you use this in the band pass so let's start with series nothing really happening there of course because you are indeed using this, that offset so you need to make sure that you do want to get them at the same point so you do want to have it at the 12 o'clock position and then you can play around with that of course but if you put it in parallel now you can truly combine bandpass filters together and really start to shape your uh, your sound. Something I really truly love to play with, especially if you then introduce some resonance. It's just a great thing to play with. So as I said, this does indeed self oscillate. So if I then connect this to the sequence that we've got here, I'm just gonna connect this to that one and this one to here. You already hear that self oscillation happening. And then I'm just gonna connect this and that, make sure that we've got a sequence going. And of course, keep in mind that you've got two filters that are both self-oscillating. The same is of course happening if you're using the band pass. quite nice right and as I said you can also use this if you connect it to the full proactive I'm just gonna do it like this and if you don't turn this all the way open as well then of course use these I of course don't have any absolute hearing here so I can't tune these to be for instance a fifth apart but that is something that you can do of course
<laughs> it's just a, a nice thing to work with. So what I then want to do is I just want to um, use this and get instead of using this to uh, get a toning, let's just grab something and make sure that we get something percussive in there as well. So I'm just going to do it like that. Always nice, right? So that's something I, I truly like about this. It does play very nicely with uh, with percussive sounds. If we then grab an LFO on the color frequency, that's always nice. So that being said, the only thing I've forgotten to do is of course uh, show you how you can actually ping this as well. So I'm just going to disconnect this and make sure that we go all the way, make sure that we are not in a self oscillating register. So grab this and grab it there. Just below self oscillation. And I would say, let's grab the full prerogative, make life easy for ourselves and just grab a trigger from there as well and just patch that into the audio. In. Love that. That's just something I, I, I like to do with these kind of things. So what, how about we just start off with a nice patch. So I'm just going to connect the owner grab the owner, get the, well again, let's grab the, yeah, let's do it like that. And I'm gonna grab the sub output there as well. outputs make sure that we get something from there. I'm not even gonna bother with a with an envelope. I'm just gonna use the gates for now. And make sure that we get both of them in. I am of course using a buffered mold for these kind of things. And 
let's grab a nice bass drum. And let's also make sure that we get a nice snare going there. about we add a bit of reverb to that apologies for the people back home on the filter there already sounding quite nice if you ask me. So I can keep playing with the um, with the marsupial as long as I want, but um, in the interest of time, let's just uh, go back to the studio and wrap this up. I'll be right back. Cheers. <laughs> so I do hope you, that you enjoyed this video on the Satonic Synth marsupial. Um, just like the Boeing, I'm, I'm really impressed again by Satonic Synth uh, with the build quality and the overall usability of this uh, module. And I hope that they have a lot more modules to come because, um, as I said, I'm really impressed. Um, so one of the things that I truly liked, uh, which I already told about, talked about in the introduction, is of course the self-oscillation and of course the, well, the way in which you actually set the filters themselves, uh, but there's much more to it. So on the other hand, it's of course the actual sound it creates. It adds a lot of warmth, if you uh, if you ask me. It does have that bit of a fuzz to it if you do add resonance, and I can just see how we can use this going forward in some nice patches. Um, I've only shown it in a very straightforward patch um, in this video, but I've got some. Uh, nice sounds out of it during one of my live streams where I combined this with a um, with a frequency modulation unit by um, by Happy Nerding the FM8, which I'm going to feature in a future video as well. And that's something that I truly saw sounds coming alive with. So um, hope you guys uh, will uh, wait for that video to come out, and otherwise just have a look at the recorded live streams. Um, 
Again, I do have to thank Satonic Synth for making this episode possible, and I also want to thank everyone uh, at home who's uh, either watching this on their uh, mobile device or on their laptop, on their TV, whatever way you want to consume this uh, typical kind of media. Um, I'm doing this, of course, on the one hand for myself, but also more importantly nowadays as well for you, uh, the viewers at home. So do take a couple of seconds and leave some comments below. Uh, give me some feedback. What would you like to see uh, more of on this channel? What would you like to see less of? And just uh, let me know what you guys uh, would prefer. That being said, again, thanks everyone for joining. Hope to see you for my next video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys uh, then. Cheers.